Tennis is a sport played and watched by millions, but it's always struggled to compete with major sports like football and rugby. In Britain, nearly one million people played tennis between 2008 and 9, but this number dropped by nearly 300,000 in 2015 to 2016. This decline seems even more worrying given the sport was thrust into the spotlight when Andy Murray became the first British male to win Wimbledon for 77 years. Despite the huge following that competitions like Wimbledon have, some think that tennis is still an elitist sport mainly played by the middle classes. One of Britain's biggest tennis poster boys was Tim Henman. He grew up in Oxfordshire where he used to play on his family's tennis courts in their garden. Despite never winning a Grand Slam title, Henman was considered Britain's best player at the time. How much of this was down to his middle class upbringing and does this image need to change in tennis? And with the Wimbledon champion's mother, Judy, branding tennis elitist, is this one of the reasons that tennis is in decline? These tennis enthusiasts certainly don't think so. I think there needs to be more information out there um, for everybody to realise that it's a sport for everybody of all abilities and it's not a, just an elitist thing that only certain people can do that happen to be in the group, you know. It's just brilliant. Everybody's the same, nobody cares if you're not any good and it's just having a good time. I think it's for everybody, it's huge fun. In 2014, 4.6% of the UK's population played tennis. But why is this figure so low? One reason could be the lack of facilities on offer to the public. According to the LTA, there are just over 21,000 tennis courts in Great Britain and it is difficult to see how this number could facilitate an influx of people playing tennis. Tom Carlton is a level 5 tennis coach at Bethesden Tennis Club. first one's going to be a high one, so it'll bounce high. You'll need just to adjust your movement. We've just got two courts here at the club. Um, there's, no, there's only two courts in Ashford, public courts in Ashford, that are available. Um, through the day, uh, uh, there are some courts that link to schools, but you know, for a, a borough the size of Ashford, it's wrong. There's not more facilities. Through the winter, it makes it uh, it makes it tough to make it appealing to everybody. Having coaches in any sport is crucial, so that the next generation of players can progress. Tennis coaching requires a mix of energy and experience, so it is important for tennis clubs to have both. Well, without the coaches, you're going to struggle to get players. So that's the bottom line, really. You'll only end up with courts and, and no one running sessions. So it is important to get coaches on board. Here we use young coaches as assistant coaches, leading our own sessions. Uh, so it's really important. They bring energy, they bring enthusiasm. More experienced coaches, they bring life skills, they bring uh, interpersonal skills they've developed over a number of years. So having a, a broader range of a type of coach, I think, is quite important. With some individual lessons costing around the £30 an hour mark, it can seem impossible for some parents to afford for their children to play. Completing coaching courses can be costly too, and some may be put off by the prices. What help is there on offer for those that can't afford it? Is the cost of tennis adding to its middle class stigma? James Amos is a level 2 tennis coach and says completing coaching courses is expensive. I was thinking about doing level 1 but it was a lot of money to uh, spend, but you can get grants and uh, endorsement towards it, so that's also uh, quite useful. It's, it's quite costly. If you're trying to have tennis as your main uh, work, then you don't have any money to start out with, so... James agrees with Tom Carlton and says that locally there aren't enough tennis courts for the public to use. Faversham's only got one tennis uh, facility and it's only outdoor as well so especially in winter because I coach there as well it's very cold and it's like it's not the nicest uh, conditions if you want your child to try and get into the sport. The average tennis club in London sets you back £240 a year. Most prices fluctuate from club to club and because of this it seems that some tennis clubs have more money to play with than others. Here under the floodlights at Y Tennis Club, two brand new clay courts have just been put in. In Kent, we're pretty lucky to have the quality of courts that we do, but the same cannot be said for the whole of the UK, and some tennis clubs cannot afford 
to have courts like this. For the lucky children whose parents can afford for them to play, tennis seems like a hobby that is not just fun, but keeping them fit and healthy too. With only 7% of all children aged between 5 and 10 playing tennis in 2015 to 16, a greater emphasis needs to be placed on encouraging them all to play. It's fun and enjoyable, and it's quick to learn. Five, six, seven, eight, eight, eight. I like learning lots of things and I like the teachers. The elitist stigma attached to tennis may have had an influence on the number of people that play. This along with the price for lessons and the number of facilities that are available have all contributed to tennis becoming a sport in decline. If these problems are solved in the future, tennis could yet become a thriving sport.